So, today's gospel story has an event of healing in it. And I really emphasize in it. Because healing is not what this story is entirely about. And I stress this for a number of reasons. First, if we reduce any of these stories with Jesus, where healing happens, to only the instance of the miracle healing, then it simply becomes a special effects film. Instead of a richly meaningful narrative, it becomes more like a Transformers movie, right? Really impressive, but zero substance. And with our passage today, in other words, Jesus relieving the woman from her fever should not be the only thing with which we walk away from this text. This isn't just a special effects moment. And of course, the healing should bring us to awe and to wonder. But this is also a moment in Scripture that tells us so much more. For one, it gives us a glimpse of Jesus' personality. That he's powerful, sure, but more importantly, that he's caring and compassionate with that power. He took her by the hand, it says. So Jesus is powerful, but he's also tender. And not only that, in this context, this is in the context of Jesus saying, that the kingdom and reign of God has arrived. Well, this moment really shows us what God's reign looks like. Like an iron fist? No. When God comes to town, so to speak, and starts enacting God's rule, it looks like showing up at houses of people who are sick, of people who are in need and in pain, It looks like showing up and confronting evil and calling out various demons. That such care is the priority of the divine kingdom. The point is, is this story is so much more than about a miracle healing. And if we put too much emphasis, too much ooh or ah on the miracle, we might miss out on all of this. And this goes for all miracles in Scripture and how we approach them. Miracles always perform a telling function. All right? A New Testament professor that said, miracles always point beyond themselves. They tell us something more than just the act of the miracle itself. They're not simply meant, in other words, to impress us as sort of divine magic tricks. And we miss out on a lot if we treat them as such. For instance, how many of you know out there or in here, how many of you know that Jonah was swallowed by a fish? All three of you, and I'm guessing probably a lot of you, all four of us in here, five of us in here, and I'm guessing a lot of you out there know that Jonah was swallowed by a fish. And you don't have to raise your hand on this one. But how many of you know what Jonah was supposed to do in Nineveh? And what that meant and means for faith in daily life? How many of you know that part of the story? Probably a lot fewer of us. And that's my point. That's what happens when we overemphasize and overfocus on the miracles in the Bible. We lose sight of Scripture's depth. And finally, another reason I say today's story is a story that has healing in it, rather than is a story about healing, is because frankly... I am not all that comfortable preaching on healing miracles. I'm not comfortable for a number of reasons. One being that as the psalmist said today in Psalm 139, such knowledge of things is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot attain it. Or as Isaiah admits today in our passage, such understanding is unsearchable. Some things of our faith are not graspable. And for me, miraculous healing is one of those. Because with miracle healings, I have too many questions. 
For instance, how do we explain the miracles of healing that fail to happen to faithful and good people? How do we explain cancer coming back and taking some but not others? What about some types of healing that never seem to happen? Sure, some people have illnesses mysteriously disappear. But I've never heard or you never hear of amputees mysteriously growing a new limb. There are people who do not and will not heal. What about them? Too many questions to speak directly and confidently about biblical healing. And I say all this to prove that divine healing is a very complicated issue. And that I can't stand here and preach to you all that this story in Mark means that Jesus will heal you. That Jesus will heal you of your physical ailments. I can't stand here and preach that if you pray enough and you ask enough, that Jesus will have you overcome whatever it is that you're battling. But I will preach this, that Jesus comes to you and is present to you in your suffering. He may not take your suffering away, but he will be with you in the midst of it. In a broken, unpredictable, and imperfect world, your physical healing may never come. But one thing, says a biblical commentator, we can confidently draw from this text is that Jesus is not afraid to enter into the places of sickness or stand in the midst of the darkest demons. End quote. This text does show us that we have no cold or distant observer in the sky. Rather, we have a God who promises to be present with us in our darkest moments. As it happened in our text today, he came and he took her by the hand. The proclamation today is not that Jesus will pluck us all out of the valleys of the shadow of death, evil, illness, but rather that he will be present And that his presence can quiet demons. So my prayer for you all who are not experiencing the physical, emotional, or spiritual healing that you need is that this very promise of divine presence and solidarity in the midst of your pain brings you enough peace and strength to move through it. And now to change gears a little bit. I said earlier that sometimes we can be distracted by miracles in the biblical story and miss out on other major lessons and promises. And in this case, there is at least one more beautiful aspect of this story to emphasize. And that is the stunning response of Peter's mother-in-law to the healing that she experienced just as stunning as the healing itself is what comes right after the healing. From verse 31, he came, he lifted her up, then the fever left her, and she began to serve. Focusing solely on the miracle, we might miss those last five words. And she began to serve, and therefore missed the depth of the whole lesson. Peter's mother-in-law models how to faithfully respond to healing or health. So no matter the type of healing or freedom we experience, from this text we hear and we see that we are not just freed from something, but for something. In the case of Peter's mother-in-law, she was restored from fever for service. No matter what healing we might experience, freedom from sin, from illness, from loneliness, or from shame, we are not, as one of my favorite professors put it, only freed from something, but also freed for something, for lives of purpose and meaning and generosity and more. 
So some of you today need physical healing desperately or know somebody who needs physical healing desperately. And you may or may not experience it. But the gospel today is deeper than just a divine magic trick. The gospel today is that Christ comes to you in your pain and is with you in the midst of it every moment. And some of you have been healed or are healthy. And the story today reveals that in your healing and health, like Peter's mother-in-law, you are called to respond, to use your health and your freedom for service. So sisters and brothers, let it be proclaimed that in pain we are not alone. And in health, we are called to begin to serve. This is the gospel of our Lord. Amen.